Thank you.
going down or right. It's not boom. I vow to all the seekers of truth at the very outset I have to say that truth is what it is you cannot change it you cannot transform it and unfortunately at this human awareness you cannot know what is the truth? You may describe, you may talk about, but to know the truth, something more has to happen. To you. Now, whatever I am going to tell you today, you need not accept it blindfolded. <coughs> we have had lots of problems with the blind faith. But if it is proved, then as honest people, you have to accept it. So please keep your mind open like a scientist. Because <coughs> it's very important to know the absolute truth in these modern times. That's the solution for all our problems, physical, mental, emotional, and also spiritual. Seekers of truth are people who have problems of spirituality. And they don't know what to seek, where to go, how to find it. They are misled by many people <coughs> because the market is full of such people. So I would like to tell you what is the truth. The truth is that you are not this body, this mind, these emotions, this ego and these conditionings, but you are much beyond that is the spirit. So the truth is that you have to become the spirit. And the second truth is something we are not aware of at all. We see all these beautiful flowers around us and we take them for granted. Actually, it's a miracle to have these different flowers of different shapes and different fragrance uh, to come out of the same Mother Earth. We don't know who works it out, who works out the seasons, or if you ask a doctor, who runs your heart, he tell, it's an autonomous nervous system. But if you ask him, who is this auto, he won't be able to tell. Who is doing this work, I say, is the all-pervading divine power of love. We have never known the power of love. We have only worked with the power of hatred. But this is the one that exists all over and works in every human being in the same manner. As you must have been told about the subtle system that is within us, I mean, it's not easy for people to believe that there is another subtle system within us. But we have to understand that the Creator who has created us 
is the greatest organizer. And he must organize something within us to achieve our last breakthrough in our evolution. We have not reached to that point where we can say we know the absolute truth. That's why there are so many problems, so many philosophies, so many ideologies and people just fighting among themselves, even in the name of God. The people who started all these great religions, like we can say Moses, Christ, Muhammad Sa, Rama, Krishna, all of them knew the truth and they established their religion in a way that shows it is more the evolutionary process they were talking about. They all said that the time has to come when you will get your resurrection. Muhammad Sahib is called as a Kiyama. In the Bible it's called as the last judgment. They were very great people, I must say, are very pure, extremely pure, and they never realized what sort of people they are facing, how people were ignorant about the divine power, about the divinity within themselves. So they propounded many things which were really an impossible task for human beings to do. To call yourself a Christian is easy, but to follow Christianity is very difficult. Christ has said that if one eye commits the sin, you take it out. If one hand does something wrong, you take it out. I haven't seen anybody without one eye or without one hand in the whole Christian kingdoms I have moved about. So that means that it's not so easy to follow Christ who was such a pure soul, who thought all the human beings were angels or some sort of divine people that they will follow whatever he has said. Then came Muhammad Sahib and he thought that why only the men are being told, why not the women? So his sense of morality was more sharp, especially for women. He said that any woman who has bad feelings uh, towards, I mean unholy feelings towards another man should be buried halfway into the Mother Earth and should be killed with stones. Because perhaps Muhammad Sahib must have said, what Christ has said that you should do it and nobody is going to do it, so people in charge of religion should do it. Imagine, if this kind of a law was applied in America, how many women would survive? I don't know. So I don't blame them because their idea about human beings was very different. And they couldn't understand the inability of a human being to take to something that is higher. Normally the tendency is to take to something uh, destructive, to take to something that takes you away from reality. And this you cannot stop, you cannot tell them, don't do it. Many people promise in the morning, all right, I'll not do it. But they cannot keep to it because they haven't got the light of the Spirit in their life. So we have to have the light of the Spirit in our heart. People talk of peace. There are organizations after organization for peace. I've met many people who have got awards for peace, but they are very really disturb people, very angry people, very hot-tempered people. I could not imagine how they got this award for peace because there is no peace with it. There is a way to achieve that peace within yourself unless and until we become peaceful within ourselves where there is no problem between our heart, our brain and our attention, then only we could be peaceful. This can be very easily achieved through this happening where this power of Kundalini has to rise. 
It is like a premium in a seed. It is a living process. As you can put a seed in the mother earth, it sprouts by itself, spontaneously, sahaj. Sah means born, ja. Sah means with and ja is born. Is born with you this power to attain this higher level of awareness, which in Sanskrit we call it as Turiya, or you can say the fourth dimension of awareness. It's not at all difficult. You are all capable of getting that. Only thing you have to have earnest desire to get. Of course, you can't give realization or awakening to people who are stupid, idiotic, or who are arrogant. You have to have earnest desire to achieve that state, because this power, which we call as Kundalini, is nothing but pure desire. Because other desires are not pure. Today we want to have a car, then we want to have a house, then we want to have a helicopter, I don't know, goes on and on and on. We are never satisfied with what we have. That shows the desires we had were not pure. The pure desire is to be one with this divine power. But if this desire, whether you are aware or not aware, is not fulfilled, then you become seekers of truth. And this is the state I find is now in these horrible modern times is so much evident. In every country I visited, I was surprised, whether it was Islamic or Russian, Indian, Australia, anywhere. I was surprised that people are earnestly seeking the truth. They might make mistakes, as I said. They may go to wrong paths, that's different. But definitely there are seekers, and restlessly they are seeking the ultimate which is the Absolute Truth. Spirit is the source of Absolute Truth. You cannot know anything without becoming self-realized as far as its own understanding is. Like, supposing somebody says that Democracy is nice. Somebody says that uh, um, another style of uh, communism is good, or socialism is good, on politics, or economics, anywhere. They never agree. Even the religions don't want to agree. They want to be exclusive. But if you see the thing what Muhammad Sahib has written, he never was exclusive. He talked about Moses. He talked about Christ, he talked about Christ's mother with great reverence. So he was not exclusive. I don't know how people have formed exclusive religions. Must be some sort of a selfish interest that people started saying, this religion is good, that religion is good, that religion is good. And when we don't know the Absolute Truth, we start believing in all these kind of things. <clears throat> to believe into anything blindly is not going to help us. We have to have the insight, insight to see what is really the truth. So when this happening takes place, what happens is that you feel a cool breeze of the Holy Ghost coming out of your head. You'll be amazed to know that the Kundalini is your own mother. Individual mother, and she is the reflection of the Holy Ghost within you. She knows everything about you. your past, your aspirations, everything she knows. And she is your individual mother, very anxious to give you your second birth. She has been waiting and waiting and waiting. And when the chance comes, she really shoots up like a jet, I must say, in this jet age. It's very surprising how in these modern times it is working so fast. 
maybe the pure desire of people is very strong. And it has been predicted that at this time all these things will happen. I must say you are all very lucky people to be born at this time and that you are seekers of ancient ages and then you should really get it. And you get it also. You must have faith in yourself. We have no faith in ourselves, not in our identity. We take to all kinds of nonsensical things because we don't know what we are. If we know how glorious we are, how great we are, what is our potential, what we can do, how many powers we have, then we would not indulge into all these things. We will not go to that extent that one becomes really mad and crazy. This identification can be easily found out once you know yourself. We know the whole world but we don't know about ourselves. First of all, you will know about your own centers that are. These centers represent all your physical, mental, emotional and spiritual being. And on your fingertips you know very clearly what centers are catching. Now supposing you know how to cure them. And if you know how to cure for others also. So you can cure yourself and cure others. Because you develop a new dimension in your awareness which we call as collective consciousness, where you can feel others very clearly on your fingertips. This is your potential, this you have within yourself. It just starts working and you are amazed how you can feel the centers that are within yourself and the centers that are with other people. You can feel for the people who are dead, who are living, who are far away, when you grow into your awareness, which is, I said, the fourth dimension, then it starts working. And you are amazed the way you can cure yourself and you can cure others. There are three doctors who have got MD in Delhi for curing incurable diseases. And now they are trying to put down how many cancer patients have been cured with surgery. Christ cured so many people. How did He cure? Nobody bothers to know and to find out. What did He do? When He cured people, He must be having some powers. And what were these powers by which He cured? There are so many diseases we have which we call incurable, can be easily cured with surgery. First of all, what we need are people who are evolved and who are matured in surgery. Once you are mature, you become an expert and also very humble, very compassionate, very loving. All your temper and all your anger and hatred falls out. It's a fact. I'm not telling you some stories. We have many here, at least I think 30 percent people who are sitting here have got it. But they dress up like you, they live like you, but they are very peaceful and they have given up all that was destructive in them, all that was spoiling their lives. Their married lives are very good, they are beautiful children. So there's a vision. One can see clearly that this whole world will one day become a beautiful place for all of us to live together happily and without any uh, grievances about us. All this uh, different ideas of racialism or caste system and all those will just drop out because you become a universal being. When you go to, say, America, you are a surgery, all the surgeries will come to see you. One person falls sick, say, in Australia, all the surgeries from all the world will make inquiries and find out how it is. You have so many who are talking about brotherhood, friendliness, but cannot be because there is this, uh, we can say, a partition within us between the divine and ourselves. But once you know the divine, you are amazed to see that the divinity just gives you that confidence 
and that understanding on your central nervous system. It is not just talking and lecturing. In Sanskrit, the word is bodh, from the word buddha, means to know on your central nervous system. Even Vedas, means Veda, Veda also Sanskrit means to know on your central nervous system. The truth is to be known on your central nervous system. You don't have to do absurd things for that at all. For example, I was there this year in Chicago and it was very, very cold. And a gentleman came with a dhoti and all his head was shaved. I asked him in this cold, why are you shivering in a dhoti? So he told me, my guru has said that if you wear a dhoti, you will get your nirvana, you will get your, your salvation. And what about this head of yours? He said, yes, that also he said that you must shave your head and must have a pigtail, so you will get your nirvana. I said, how could you believe such a nonsensical thing? In India, 80% people wear dhotis, they must be already there. And what, what about the shaven head? Kabila has said, if by shaving head, if you can go to heaven, what about the lamb which is shaved every uh, year twice? That would be there already to welcome you. So all these nonsensical things people try to do, meditation and they say that you can rise above the mother earth. What is the need? I don't understand. As it is, we have problem of jams. And why do you want to go on three feet there, troubling everybody? All these funny ideas, I don't know how people accept and pay thousands and thousands of dollars on that. Actually, you must understand that you cannot pay for divine love. You cannot pay. Because God doesn't understand money. He doesn't understand banking. That's your headache, not His. So once you realize that you cannot pay, most of these people will dis disappear from this earth. But it's very difficult for human beings to say that you cannot pay because they want to purchase everything. Even me, they would say, Mother, why shouldn't you take some money? I said, but for what? How much are you going to pay? This is something invaluable. You cannot value it. How much are you going to pay? Then you don't have to do any exercise for it, like standing on your head or doing all kinds of uh, these asanas and this. It's all right for your health, but it's not for achieving your ascent. It's not for that. Some people fast and starve and torture the body, which is absolutely wrong. See, God Almighty is your Father. Father of all the fathers, all the compassion is with Him. Which father would like his son to torture because he wants to meet the Father? So He is the Father of fathers. How will He expect you to torture your body like this? But this idea from where it has come, I don't know, that you must torture your life just to achieve your asset. It's very simple, you have to be normal people, and as normal people, you get your Self-Realization. Self-Realization, you can say, goes into two uh, stages. First, you achieve a state when you are thoughtlessly aware. All the time, we are jumping on the cusp of thoughts, which come from the future or from the past. We cannot be in the present. It's impossible. But when this Kundalini rises, she elongates those thoughts and creates a space in between, which in Sanskrit is called a vilamba, is a pause. And there it is, you are thoughtlessly aware. And that is the point where you grow spiritually. That is the point where you become a witness of the whole play. And also, that is the point where you become absolutely peaceful. You watch everything happening, you see everything going on, but you are just watching it. Like when you are in the water, the water creates waves and you are afraid of the waves. But supposing you get onto a boat, you can see the same waves and enjoy, 
But supposing you learn how to swim, you can jump down and save many people. It's the same stages you have to pass through. So the first one is when you become thoughtlessly aware, and the second stage is where you are doubtlessly aware. You have no doubts about yourself, about divinity, about anything. But it happens to some people, both things together, somehow, and they achieve a state of complete peace within. They also emit peace. They also emit divine vibrations by which many problems can be solved. Many people who need peace can achieve it. The another quality of spirit is that when it is in attention, it enlightens your attention. By that enlightenment, you can see things which normally you don't see, you feel which you never felt. It's very surprising that this attention is so active, so meticulously working. If you pay attention to something, it works out. It works, this attention works, and this is the kind of an attention you have which is potential. But once it becomes enlightened, it becomes such a dynamic force within yourself. And you pay attention to yourself and attention to others, and amazingly you help people by your attention. The another greatest quality of spirit is that it is the source of joy. Not that only it is the source of absolute truth, but it's a source of joy. You work very hard, you do everything, but you are a witness of the whole work. You don't think you are doing anything, you are just enjoying everything. You are enjoying your value system, you are enjoying your morality, you are uh, enjoying your virtues. This joy is the source of doing everything effortlessly. Such, It all works out. It works out so beautifully that amazingly we find in a new world which we call the Kingdom of God. When I went to America, they had a problem of this coup going on. So, no, I'm sorry, to Russia. And the Russians were least disturbed who were Sajogis. I said, aren't you worried about this coup which is going on? He said, why should we, Mother? We are in the kingdom of God. Why should we worry? We are not in the kingdom of Russia. Can you imagine such a confidence? And we have thousands and thousands of Russians who have taken to Sahaja Yoga because they are not conditioned. They are very clean people and they have understood what is truth is. In the same way, it's working out everywhere, no doubt. But in the West, I find people are very conditioned about things, and this conditioning sometimes stops them from achieving Self-realization. Slowly, slowly, they also start taking to you. First time we had two people from Australia who came to see me in Bombay. They got their realization, only two persons, and today we have so many in Australia. Because Definitely, they are very nice people, they want to be good, they want to achieve something higher, they are all sincere about it, and we have to now think about our younger people who are supposed to be misled by many wrong things. These also have come to Sahaja Yoga and have become quite all right, very normal, very beautiful people. We have no problems of younger people, even of smaller children. It's the times, I call it the blossom time, which is here, and we should take full advantage of that. I'm sure all of you are going to get your realization. Only one thing you have to remember that you must have faith in yourself. Do not doubt yourself for anything whatsoever. As long as you don't doubt yourself, you will get your Self-realization without any difficulty. May God bless you. Can we have some lights there or something?
Can we have some lights at the back? I can't see them. Lights underneath us. Can't have lights there, please. All right, it's good. <coughs> Those who are standing, can you sit down or you can come here in this room to sit? It's better to sit down. It will hardly take ten minutes. <coughs> and the uh, only thing is I would request you not to disturb others by walking out or getting up at that time. Hardly ten minutes. <coughs> Of course you have questions, so you may write to me and uh, I will definitely try to answer them. <coughs> I have been doing this work for the last 25 years now. I am quite an expert in answering all kinds of questions, whether they are funny, stupid or anyway, genuine. Uh, so, but it's a mental acrobat. There is nothing so great. It is only up to the mind. You have to go beyond the mind. So. It's better that we should forget about those questions just now, get your realization, and then I'll see how we have questions. <coughs> now, Of course, there are some conditions, which are very simple conditions, which I hope you can follow. <coughs> One of them One of them is that you have to know at this moment, you are not guilty of anything. If you were, you would have been in jail. But when you are sitting here, please forgive yourself, very important. If you don't forgive yourself and you call yourself always guilty of something, I mean, the norms of life in the West is so funny that even if you put your spoon like this, then you feel it. It's nothing important. But if you feel guilty, then you catch on this center on the left hand side, which we call as left issue. And it's very dangerous because it causes a very big damage. You might get angina, you might get spondylitis, or you might get lethargy corpus. So, what is the use of feeling guilty? It's not your job to feel guilty and carrying these dangers with you. So, in all compassion and love of God, please forgive yourself and know that you are not guilty at all. It's a fashion also to be guilty for anything. Like I met one lady, she was guilty because in Afghanistan people were starving. I said, why are you feeling guilty here? If they are starving, send some money. Process of sitting down and feeling guilty. It's a kind of a, you see, a melodramatic uh, attitude, I think, 
that people think, oh, I am guilty, how can I? And to me, some people told me that you look so joyous, that's not good. In France, when, first when I went there, you shouldn't look so joyous. I said, but I am, what can I do? They said, no. Here people are very miserable and you must say you are miserable. So I said, why are they miserable here? So I started my lecture with lay miserable. And I said, if every tenth lamppost has got a pub and about twelve lampposts there's a prostitute standing, what else will you do? You are inviting your own miseries. And sitting outside on the street they were discussing when the world is going to end. That's the best. Because now they are fed up with themselves, so they wanted to end the world also. So all this is more sort of a, a mental attitude to feel guilty, I should not have done that, I should not have done that. So at this moment I would request, don't feel guilt. Because if this center is in Japadi, this Kundalini won't rise, it cannot penetrate. So you will also miss such a nice opportunity. Then there is another problem is with the center on the optic chasm, which we call as Agya Chakra. If you do not forgive people, it becomes like this. It's a very constricted center. So you have to forgive others also. If you forgive others, then this center opens out like this. Otherwise, it's impossible. You cannot cross over this center. It's one of the most difficult ones. So please, just at this moment, forgive everyone in general. Don't even think about people whom you have to forgive because it's a headache. You have to think of them. So just in general you forgive everyone. Just forgive everyone. You will feel very happy and much lighter just now. These are the two conditions we have. The third one is easier, is to take out your shoes. When I said this in England, half of them walked out on the first day. They couldn't take out their shoes, so much attached there. Because this Mother Earth helps us a lot. It helps us a lot to achieve the... achieve our asset. She sucks our problem. You don't know what this Mother Earth is. It's a very great blessing, especially in Australia. It's a very great land. Now, in the beginning, we'll tell you how we'll be nourishing our centers, which is very simple. This is only once you have to do tonight. You don't have to do it again. It's all right, very, very simple. Now, after taking out your shoes, you please put both your feet apart from each other. That's all. Because as there are two powers within us, left and right, which are very different, so better keep them away from each other. The left power, if we call, as the left sympathetic nervous system, which is nourished by Iranadi is for our desire, works out our desires, which is, uh, I should say, not a concrete thing, just to desire through this Nadi. So, you have to put your left hand like this on your lap, very comfortably you should sit down, uh, indicating that you are desirous of getting your Self-Realization, that's all. Just put your left hand towards me like this, all the time. With the right hand is for your action. The right nadi, which is pingla nadi, works out for your action. So you have to use your right hand on different centers. On the left hand side, we work only on the left hand side. 
So put your right hand on your heart, please. In the heart resides the spirit. I've already told you about the spirit. If you become the spirit, you have the light of the spirit and you become your own guide, you become your own master, you become your own guru. So we take our right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side, which is the center of your master. Then we take our hand in the low portion of our abdomen on the left hand side. Surprisingly, this is the center of pure knowledge of the Divine. Then we take our hand in the upper portion of our abdomen. Then on our heart again. Now in the corner of your neck and your shoulder, I have already told you about this chakra, and turn your head to your right. I think it's really, really caught up here. Please forgive yourself, please forgive yourself. Now, then we take our right hand on top of our forehead across, like this, and bend our head slowly. This is the center where you have to forgive everyone without thinking about it. Then we take our right hand on the back side of our head and push back our head as far as possible. This is the center where just for your satisfaction you have to ask forgiveness from the all-pervading divine power, without feeling guilty, again. Now, you have to stretch your palm fully like this, and put the center of your palm on top of your head, onto the fontanel bone, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now please put down your head as far as possible. Push back your fingers as far as possible, and press it hard, your scalp, which you have to move clockwise slowly seven times. Push back your fingers, that's very important. Push back your fingers, so there's a better pressure. That's all you have to do. Bend your heads, please, bend your heads. Push back your fingers, that's all. This is all we have to do, and now we have to close our eyes. Before closing our eyes, I would say better take out your spectacles, uh, because it might help your eyesight also. And <coughs> please don't open your eyes till I tell you. Don't press very hard, just ordinarily as we sleep, this is very gentle way of closing the eyes. We have to have respect for ourselves and understanding that we are capable of achieving this higher state. So now please put your left hand again towards me, both the feet away from each other, and close your eyes and put your right hand on your heart. That will be also. I think you can go now. Now, here you have to ask a very fundamental question about yourself to me, in your heart, not loudly, nothing to be said loudly. So please ask a question, you can call me Mother or you can call me Sri Mataji, whatever you like. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times in your heart. I have already told you that if you become the spirit, you become your own guide 
and your own master. So now please take your hand, the upper portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side and press it. And here you ask another fundamental question about yourself three times, saying, Mother, am I my own master? Ask this question three times. I must tell you, I respect your freedom. If you don't want to have your realization, I cannot force it. If you don't want to know about the pure knowledge of the Divine, I cannot force it on you. You have to ask for it. So please put your hand in the lower portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. And here you please ask six times, because this center has got six buttons. Mother, please let me know the pure knowledge of the Divine. Please ask six times. As soon as you start asking this question, the Kundalini has started rising. It won't trouble you. It won't give you any shock. At the most, some people might feel a little heat on their hands, but it has started. So now please raise your right hand to the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand. Now these are the upper centers which we have to use, open with our full self-confidence. Here you have to say ten times with full self-confidence, Mother, I am my own master. Please say this ten times, Mother, I am my own master, with full confidence. At the very outset I've told you that you are not this body, this mind, these emotions, this intelligence, this ego or your conditionings, but you are the pure spirit. So now please raise your right hand on your heart and say with full confidence, Mother, I am the pure spirit. Please say it twelve times, twelve times. Mother, I am the pure spirit. <clears throat> I have already requested you to forgive yourself because this all-pervading power is the ocean of knowledge, ocean of compassion and love and bliss, but above all it is the ocean of forgiveness. And whatever mistakes you have committed can be easily dissolved in this ocean of forgiveness. So please forgive yourself. Raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and shoulder, please. And here press it hard. Put your head towards your right. And here, please, you have to say sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say it sixteen times. It's very important. <clears throat> I've already told you that you have to forgive everyone in general, not thinking about them, because if you don't forgive, this center of Agya won't open out. As it is, whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do it. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. So at this moment, try to understand that as it is, you have tortured yourself by not forgiving. But at this moment, if you forgive, the center will open and you will achieve what you have to really achieve, your self-realization. So please, Forgive all the people in general. Raise your right hand 
on top of your forehead and slowly put down your head. And here you have to say, not how many times, but from your heart, you have to say, Mother, I forgive everyone in general. From your heart you have to say, not how many times. You have to now ask forgiveness from the Divine Power. Without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, just for your satisfaction. So now take your right hand on the back side of your head and push back your head, pull it, push back here. You have to say without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, from your heart, not how many times, O oh, Divine Power, if I have done any mistakes, please forgive me. From your heart you have to say, not counting. Now the last center is very important. <coughs> <clears throat> it's the most important. So stretch your palm fully. Now you have to put the center of your palm on top of the fontanel bone area properly and now bend your head as far as possible. Stretch back your fingers. Stretch back your fingers At this moment I have to again say that I cannot give you Self-realization unless and until you ask for it because I respect your freedom. So here you move your scalp slowly ten times. Scalp by stretching your fingers out. Please put down your head. Please put down your head. And now move your scalp ten times. I'm sorry. Seven times. seven times slowly, clockwise, saying, Mother, please give me my Self-Realization. Please move your scalp slowly, clockwise. <coughs> Now take down your hand and please open your eyes slowly. Put both the hands towards me like this, just like this. And put the right hand towards me and bend your head and see with your hand, left hand, if there is a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your fontanel bone Hot or cold breeze might be coming. Doesn't matter. It is hot means you have not forgiven yourself or forgiven others. So it's still hot. Again, okay. Take your left hand towards me like this, put down your head and see with your right hand if there's a cool or a hot breeze like vibrations coming out of your fontanel bone area. Please see with your right hand.
Sometimes some people get it closer, sometimes they get it very far away. So you have to move your hand to see. If it is hot or cold, doesn't matter. But if you forgive just now, yourself or others, it will definitely become better and cooler. All right. Now again once more. Put your left hand towards me again and put your right hand on top of your fontanel bone area and bend your head and now see yourself. Now, don't doubt yourself, that's the main point. Now, raise your both the hands towards the sky like this. And ask a question, put your head up and ask one of the questions out of these three questions. Three times. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Second. Mother, is this the all-pervading power of divine love? Third one. Mother, is this the Parama Chaitanya? Ask any one of these questions three times. It's all right. The vibrations are coming from you to me. <laughs> All right, put it down. Please put it down. Now, please put your hands like this. Now, watch me without thinking. You can do it. Watch me without thinking. All those who have felt cool or hot breeze, on the fingertips or on the palms or out of their fontanel bone area, please raise both your hands. Do you feel it? Good. May God bless you, most of you, surprisingly. Every one of you. One or two haven't got it, but we'll see them. May God bless you all. Now you have to know what are these vibrations. What is this cool breeze which you have felt for the first time is the all-pervading power of divine love. And how to use it, how to work it out. That's what you have to do and grow into it. But I see when I come, I don't know, everywhere people somehow believe me very much and they come to my programs. And afterwards they just disappear, some of them, I don't know. They don't trust their own fellow men who are here, I souls here, who know so much about Sarya. So please do not waste this awakening. Like Christ has said in his parable that some seeds were sprouted but they were thrown into wasteland. In the same way it should not happen. There will, this is not like other people that they take introduction and then take money. You don't have to pay anything, but you have to respect your self-realization and you have to come to our centers where you will grow. As it is, we don't take money, we don't have palaces for you to come and meditate, but they are nice places and very good evolved people here who are humble, kind and compassionate. They'll tell you all about it. They're not going to keep any secrets. Some people didn't feel it, doesn't matter. It can be worked out for them, all of them. Maybe some reason they haven't felt. So don't feel disappointed. There's nothing to be disappointed about. It is all worked out. Also the people who have problems can come and see those people in the center. I'm sure they will solve your problems, whether it is physical, mental, emotional, anything. They are doing great work in all over Australia. We have centers all over, please come, in a humble way, because we have to grow and grow and become the great tree of divinity, which you all can become, I'm sure about. Thank you very much. Thank you.